Hey, it's Joel, and guess what? We're upgrading the print farm. This mountain of Prusa Mark IVs boxes behind me is the first stage in the upgrade of the 3D Printing Nerd print farm. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna take you on the journey of upgrading the print farm and give you the ideas and the principles that I tried to follow, and maybe you can use that as inspiration to start or upgrade your own little farm, or big farm, or massive farm. The first thing I wanna say though is in picking the machine. Now I chose the Prusa platform and the farm, what it was before was Prusa Mark 3S Plus 3D printers. And those have been absolute workhorses. And I liked being within the Prusa ecosystem, but I thought that with the latest generations of machines, I wanted Wi-Fi on each machine and I wanted the ability to control my farm via an interface. And I wanted to be able to transfer the files wirelessly. Now, I know that the Mark 3S Plus platform can be upgraded to the 3.5 or the 3.9 or even the 4, and the 3.5 does give you the ability to have wireless connectivity and the ability to control the farm via an interface, which, which is Prusa Connect, but you don't get that next extruder. And that's another reason why I wanted to go with the Mark 4S, is that next extruder is incredible. I love it for flexible materials and I love the speed it can achieve and I love the quality it produces. And so with those things in mind, that's why I went with the Mark IV S platform. Obviously, and really quickly, just whatever printer you choose is right for you. I like the Prusa ecosystem and I've invested in my business using the Prusa ecosystem. And I'm excited for this next generation of machine to serve me for years and years and years like the Mark III S Plus platform. Again, I'm going with Prusa, you don't have to, but identify the characteristics in the machine or the machines that you want to start or upgrade your farm with and contrast and compare those with others and then Make your choice. Feels good. Next, I need to prepare the room for these to go because there's more machines than what I had previously and that's gonna be a chunk of work. Well, we're to the point where I think we can start to load machines in. This is crap and I didn't want this. I hate it. I thought, I have these older, stronger shelves, which you can see in place, but I didn't want the wire shelving and I measured. So I measured to make sure that I had enough room for these shelves and there's gonna be four machines per shelf and then three shelves, so 12 machines per shelf. So I'll get 36 different machines along here. So I chose these shelves that I had around the office and then had to move stuff off because I was reclaiming them for this. And then I put older shelves in place for that stuff. They all had the wire shelving, so I measured and I was able to go to the local hardware store and get some plywood cut. And now I've got plywood on these shelves instead of this wire shelving. This is nice. This is really nice having this plywood right here. And this is gonna provide a nice sturdy surface for the printers to sit on and hopefully be nice and sturdy for a long time. One thing I wanted to try and to see if it would work was to put this insulating foam between the wood and the metal of the shelves. Uh, with, with 3D printers, obviously there are some vibrations and if I have a bunch of machines going at high speed, it could cause the, well, I don't know. I always think of the Mythbusters and the break step bridge, right? So what I'm trying to do is isolate vibrations and reduce noise. And that should increase print quality in the, in the end. And so I've got this, this foam here and we cut and put pieces of it on either underside of the shelf, just along here and here and here. With the idea being, this would be a barrier between the metal of the frame and the wood of the shelf. It went okay. Like it was an experiment. We held it in with some blue tape and we'll, we'll see what happens. And I've, I've put enough room between all of the shelves, the higher the shelves, in order for us to put uh, floor mats and a concrete paver. So imagine floor mats and a concrete paver being able to hold the machines. And I, I know that's the ultimate in noise reduction and vibration reduction. I can try that at a later time, but for now, I think the shelving is, I don't know, we'll see. Should be fine. So for you, when you're planning your farm, you have to make sure that you have room for the machines that you want to acquire or upgrade to. 
and then you want to plan out your shelving to make sure that you have enough outlets and the right amount of amperage available in order to run the machines. As an example, here in my print farm, I have a 200 amp sub panel and I've numbered my outlets for each breaker that they go to. And I have 20 amp breakers and I know I can put 12 machines per breaker, no problem. The math works out. <sighs> Time to unbox the machines and rescue the gummy bears. There's a lot of moving parts. So let me take you through the process of not just taking the Mark IVs out of the box, but in, in doing it for farm applications because, because that's what I'm doing. So my wife was helping me as you've probably seen in the time-lapse footage. And once we open a box, there's certain things that we just don't have to worry about. Namely the gummy bears. Uh, my wife loves the gummy bears, so we, we save them for her and we're gonna keep them as farm candy. The gummy bears and the build plate that's on the top foam, we save those just separately because they don't need to go on the printer shelf. This sheet, the handbook, the little thing that says, hey, here's the checklist, those things can be put into the recycling pile, which is quite large. The power cable and the USB stick, those get set aside. And then we take the top foam off and we set it aside. Inside here is gonna be the Mark IV S. Sometimes the bottom foam comes out, but we're not gonna worry about that because it didn't. And now we can just set it aside. Perfect, and again, the power cord, USB stick go right next to it. And inside the box, there's gonna be two other boxes. One is gonna be the accessories box, set that aside. And the other is gonna be the full spool of filament, and that's gonna be for the first test print. One thing that's nice, the Prusa machine does come with a full spool of material. So helpful. With the printer off this side, let's grab the accessories box. And inside the accessories box is going to be the isopropyl alcohol, alcohol pad, um, parts of the spool holder, the tool set that comes with each one, lubrication, and the parts for the spool holder to kind of put together. So what I've been doing is, let's see, we'll set this aside. I'm keeping one of the hex keys out in order to assemble the spool holder. And there's, uh, there's a couple different parts to it. Looks familiar. Let's see, this side goes in here, screws in tight. This side goes here, screws in tight. There we go, so we got that. Now we need the part that hangs on here and sticks out that the filament goes through. I built it. Now on the machine, there's gonna be that foam right here. I'm gonna take that off, toss that down. On the build plate is the test print and we don't need that. Okay, that USB stick that I put aside, I'm gonna plug that into the machine because it needs it. There we go. And then the power cord, it'll go with the machine when I put it here. And then this will go just like so. Look at that. So then this is gonna be put onto the bench. Power cord's gonna be next to it. This sack is actually gonna contain the rest of the stuff. So that's gonna go in there. And then I get the air out. There we go. Here's the Prue cement. This is Galaxy Black. It's going to come with all of the Mark IVs machines. And I just find out where the spool is. And then I put it like that. There you go. Look at that. That's how I do that. That's how I set up the machines for the farm. Now, I know if you just get onesies or twosies, you're going to put things in certain places. But because I have dozens of machines, I have to categorically either choose things to recycle straight away or choose things to save straight away or best ways to set up the machines for success. Because once I get them all on here, then I've got to plug them in. I got to get them on my Wi-Fi. I got to add them to my Prusa Connect account. And then I have to start test prints on all of them. Do it again. Fun never stops. Well, that part's done. Boy, that was a chunk of work. Uh, a big thanks to my wife and my son, David, who helped with that. I couldn't have done it, couldn't have done without them. So next up, uh, for any print farm, what you have to do is verify the condition of the machine. And before that, you need to plug it into power. So what I've got off Amazon are these, uh, these, well, these power bricks. And they, they plug in, and then they got a square here. <laughs> and 
I can plug all the printers in and they've actually got some USB ports so I can provide power to GoPros or phones or, or whatever. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is plug all the machines in. And like I said before, I've got the proper uh, circuits in my circuit breaker box. So uh, I have lots of 20 amp circuits here and a number of machines will plug into each 20 amp circuit and that should provide enough power and not be too close to being over. It's just every time I want to do something, and one of the things that you have to consider if you're ever going to do a print farm yourself is the thing you do to one machine, you have to do to every machine in your farm. And so as you grow, well, now I have to do it to a whole bunch of machines. <laughs> I'm talking too much. I really need to get to work. So next steps, plug into power, get a test print done of each machine. And then once the machine is verified and the test print is good, we're ready to rock and roll. I didn't record the whole time lapse of doing everything over here because it was just really friggin' boring. It's a chunk of work. It was getting electrical plugged in. It was getting the Wi-Fi set up and it was getting it connected to my Prusa Connect account. But I got all machines on Wi-Fi. And when doing a print farm, sometimes you have to consider creating a new Wi-Fi network or a new subnet in order to host everything on. There's so many machines here that I have a separate Wi-Fi SSID that the farm connects to. And those machines then are a part of that, that Wi-Fi network. And then that's just, it goes out. So that way there's some security built in. I'm not necessarily that worried, but all of these machines have tiny little computers in them that can connect to the internet and do all sorts of crazy stuff. And so it's just one way of keeping yourself secure. I also connected it up to my Prusa Connect account. So that's a web-based interface where I can manage all of the machines, the files that go on them and the printing. I use blue tape to label all the machines. I've got shelf numbers, row numbers, and then machine names. And that really helps keep track of some stuff too. And then it was just loading filament and it was printing some benchies. And, and you wanna get that first test print off of a brand new machine before you implement it in your farm because you wanna know that it works. And you know, the, the bench is a great one. It doesn't take much time. It can showcase some errors, maybe a bell loose or something. Thankfully, these are all in tip top shape. All the benches look great. I'm just looking at them, they're all behind me and it looks really cool. Now it means the machines are, are signed off to enter production. Well, almost though. So I did notice that there is a new firmware update available for the Mark IVs platform. And there are alpha versions out there, but being this a business use case and a business machine, I'm not gonna be running the alpha builds on these, I'm running production. And so using the Prusa Connect web interface, I'm able to send the firmware to all the machines, get it updated. So now that Benchies are printed and the firmware is up to date and everything is good to go, all of these machines now on the farm are signed off for production and just in time because you're gonna to wanna to see this. Many months later, Check this out. Look at all these boxes behind me. Thousands and thousands of customer parts printed on that print farm that you just saw me build out. I've had a glorious time doing this. It's been really interesting trying to figure it out on my own and taking advice from others. I've had to fix machines. I've had to mitigate certain filament constraints. We've had to find room, not just for the parts we produce, but the packing materials to put the parts in. And then once we've packed the parts in the packing materials, finding a place to put them, which happens to be right behind me. It's been a glorious journey and I'm really glad I could show you the process of how I went about things. And if that inspires you to do your own sort of print farming with one, two, or many machines, I would love to hear about it. I'd love to hear about your experience and how you go about things. And let me know down in the comments below. Well, listen, if you made this fire awesome, don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in and print farm all the things. And as always, high five. I gotta move these boxes.